G'day, my name's Nikki Parat. I'm a jazz bassist and also a vocalist. Today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of left hand technique on the acoustic bass. I'm going to talk to you about chromatic scales, about two octave scales, and also about exploring more of the fingerboard, this whole length of the fingerboard, not just up to here. Okay, so let's start with chromatic scales. Let's start with the G string and let's use correct fingering. What I mean is traditional bass fingering is one, two, and four. Okay, and that's how we proceed up the neck of the bass. Just one, two, four, until we get to here, and I'll explain that in a minute. So let's start with the G chromatic scale, open G, A flat, A, B flat, B natural, C, C sharp, D, E flat, E natural, and this is where the fingering changes, F natural, F sharp, and then we employ this finger alone, G, okay, that should be your harmonic G, okay, and now if you know the bass already, if you've been practicing the bass for a while, you can add a third octave to that, so it would sound like this. If you are not familiar with that area and just want to do one octave, just come back here from the G, from this G harmonic. Okay, that's your G chromatic scale, one octave or two if you game. Okay, when you go up, make sure you always come back and be very careful with your intonation because we don't have frets to tell us where we are on the bass. So you really have to use your ear and use good fingering, good shifting, okay, to know exactly where you are on the bass. You can try a string a day or whenever you practice, try a different string. Next time you practice, you're tired of doing the G chromatic, try it on the D string, same fingering. That's your harmonic D. Same for the A string, same fingering, same concept. Here's a big tip that I learnt that helped me be relaxed when I play and also so you don't hurt your wrist. It's very important that you keep your wrist and hands in good shape. Never bend the wrist, okay? Never do this bring the bass to you so that you can always have a flat wrist when you're going up the neck of the bass and into thumb position. Always a flat wrist. That way you will never you know, get carpal tunnel syndrome or any of these problems associated with being a musician, a piano player or a bass player primarily. So make sure that you can pivot with your knee as I do or move it like I do. I mean, it's really up to you how you want to stand with the bass. But the main thing is to always keep a straight wrist, okay? Sometimes you want to practice in front of a mirror there so that you can really see if your wrist is straight as you go up the neck. Uh, another thing, chromatic scales, two octave major scales. Really good in proper hand positions. Let's try F major. Okay, when you've got that, G major. Now, of course, you can also play this with the bow. Uh, if you have a bow, and uh, it also is very good for the intonation to practice these with a bow as well. The last thing I want to talk about is getting to this area of the bass, which is called thumb position, because the thumb comes out of hiding around here, 
and then we start using the thumb, okay? So there are many, many ways to practice this part of the bass, thumb position part of the bass. I would recommend start playing melodies across the strings, and then you'll start to enjoy practicing in this area of the bass. I'm gonna demonstrate that for you right now. There's a bridge, there's another A section, but you get the idea. The important thing is to enjoy playing more of the instrument. It'll help your soloing, it'll help your overall bass playing. So the important things I think, scales, of course. Chromatic scales are very important on the bass. Keeping the good fingering, keeping the, the wrist flat, and exploring using melodies that you already know in playing different areas of the bass. And they're the main things I think that get you to good bass playing. Thank you, I'm Nikki Parat.